Hi. Film recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a romantic comedy film called He's Just Not Into You. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. As a sweet little girl plays in the sandlot, she smiles when the boy she likes approaches her. But suddenly, for no apparent reason whatsoever, the boy pushes and insults her. The little girl's heart is crushed so she runs to her mother, who would painstakingly tell her that the boy didn't push her out of hate, but out of love. She distinctively says that boys hurt the girls they have a crush on, and at this point, the narrator relates that this is where one of the biggest issues start for women. From a very young age, they're pretty much conditioned to believe that cold or even cruel behavior can be indicators of someone's interest in them. They make excuses for men, trying to convince themselves that it's one thing or another, but they can never accept the very distinct possibility that, well, maybe he's not just into you, or them, for that matter. But what are the signs that you gotta look out for? Gigi, Connor and Alex, or if he's not calling you, completely misreading or otherwise just missing these signs has become a lifestyle for Gigi, who is currently on a date with a real estate agent named Connor. Connor's so obviously uninterested in Gigi, and his apathy is so palpable that anyone with eyes and ears can feel it except for her. After the date, Gigi giddily awaits his next call, while Connor is revealed to being strung along by a woman named Anna, who's sending him her own bag of mixed signals. For the next few days, Gigi asks her sister Janine for some advice about the will-he-won't-he dilemma going on in her mind. And since Gigi's a piece of work, there's a whole Gigi support team that's comprised of Janine and their coworker, Beth. Janine suggests that she make the first move since women showing submissiveness during the getting to know stage is already an outdated concept. With her encouragement, Gigi ends up calling Connor, but she receives nothing but total radio silence from him. In her desperation, Gigi heads to the bar that Connor frequents, and there, she meets the owner, Alex. He tells Gigi that Connor won't be coming in that evening. But that isn't so bad since Alex and Gigi end up talking the entire night, and a friendship forms between them. Alex is basically the antithesis to what Gigi is, he always keeps a safe distance from all the women he goes out with, so much so that he ends up hurting them every single time. And since he's a prime example of the type of guys that keep blowing Gigi off, Alex sympathetically informs her that guys tend to give mixed signals because they don't have the courage to say outright that they're not interested. Gigi protests, saying that she's heard of cases from friends of friends where the guys given mixed signals, yet things still worked out in the end. Alex retorts that Gigi is the rule and not the exception. From then on, Gigi and Alex have kept contact with each other, with Alex serving as her personal dating coach who specializes in reading signals from the men that she dates. This chance encounter with Alex significantly alters her outlook and since then, she's become extremely paranoid about reading signals. She reports this to Beth and Janine, with Beth growing quite affected by this revelation since her partner, Neil, has been putting off on marrying her for years now, and Gigi's little anecdote makes her worry that Neil isn't being serious with her. One time, Alex promises Gigi that he'll set her up with a cousin of his named Bill, who's a genuinely nice guy. Alex arranges for the three of them to meet and once the two of them are together, he can leave them to their date. That was the plan at least, but Alex screwed up and accidentally gave Bill a different day. Not wanting to waste Gigi's time since she's already there at the bar, Alex decides to hang out with her instead. And with the growing closeness between the two of them, Gigi once again misreads everything and believes that Alex's actions are a roundabout way of him saying that he actually likes her. Fully convinced that he's is into her, Gigi attends his house party, which he invited her to, so he can help her get with guys. At the party, Gigi waits for Alex to casually yet romantically sweep her off her feet, watching his every move amidst the constantly shifting sea of party-goers. After the party, there's just Gigi and Alex left, and she pounces on him like a jaguar and kisses him. He's surprised by her sudden move and pushes her away, telling her that he doesn't like her. Though Gigi's hurt by this, she retorts that Alex is in a worse position than her since his constant evasion of anything real will lead him to being all alone. For the next few days, Alex finds that he can't stop thinking about Gigi. For the first time in his life, Alex is the one who's in an emotionally vulnerable position, and his desperate demeanor and frantic behavior of constantly checking his messages even catch the attention of some of his employees. Ironically, a girl he's blown off in the past is the one who helps him realize that he actually has some deep and genuine feelings for Gigi. With this realization, he heads out to her place, where he finds her having just come home from a date with Bill. Alex professes his love to her, and the two of them kiss, effectively proving Gigi to be the exception and not the rule, as he once told her. Janine, Ben, and Anna, or, if he's sleeping with someone else, recently, Janine's been obsessed with improving her house with her longtime husband, Ben. She's also been very uneasy about their relationship for a while now, because she feels that Ben's lying to her. She consistently finds cigarette packets and ashtrays lying around their home, and Janine doesn't like it when Ben smokes since her father died of lung cancer. He repeatedly denies that he's gone back to smoking, but Janine feels that he's lying. Unbeknownst to her, Ben is having an extramarital affair with Anna, a yoga instructor and aspiring singer. 
He met her by chance one night at a grocery store and promised to help her with her singing career by introducing her to some of his connections. All of this, however, is just a pretense for their affair. While they're together, Ben tells Anna all about his doubts with his marriage. At a very young age, Janine gave him the ultimatum to either get married or break up with her. Not wanting to break up, he decided to marry her, but now, he feels that he may have rushed his decision. One day, during a trip to Home Depot, Ben decides that now's a good time as any to come clean about his affair. Naturally, Janine is devastated by this, but she ends up deciding that she wants to work through it. She says that they'll talk about it when they get home, which comes as a surprise to Ben since he thought that she would have wanted him out of the house stat. It becomes quite clear that he wants her to kick him out since he doesn't have the courage to just leave. And strangely enough, Janine remains insistent on knowing whether or not Ben still smoked. Again, he denies this, and he's taken aback that this is what she decided to focus on after learning of his adultery. Some time passes since Ben's confession, and Janine reflects on how she might have been partially responsible for Ben's infidelity. She thinks back to how she gave him an ultimatum so she starts wondering if what she did was even fair and reasonable to begin with. Janine also laments that she and Ben never get it on anymore, and she believes that this might have pushed him to get his wood polished elsewhere. Either way, she knows that she loves Ben so she still wants to make an effort to save their marriage. With that, she goes ahead to Ben's office around lunchtime, and of course, this is when he and Anna are about to take a trip to Pound Town. The trip gets cancelled when they hear Janine knocking, so Ben has no choice but to hide Anna in the closet. Janine comes in all hot and heavy for her cheating and lying husband and proceeds to undress in front of him. When he asks her what she's doing, she answers that she's trying to save their marriage, so Ben doesn't protest against her advances even though his side chick's right there in the closet. After the two do it, Ben sends her home, where she'll wait for him to discuss their marriage. Once Janine left, Anna comes out of the closet and berates Ben for his cowardice, calling him a disgusting man. Meanwhile, Janine would never come to know that Anna was hiding in that closet that day, but she didn't need to know that for her to decide that she was ready to leave Ben. When she's all alone in their unrenovated house, Janine once again finds a cigarette packet lying in the middle of the house. This may be a small thing in comparison to what he's been doing, but upon seeing the cigarettes, Janine explodes in anger. When Ben comes home, he would find all of his clothes and belongings packed and ready to go. Among these is a pack of cigarettes, which has a note that says, knock yourself out. Connor, Anna, and Mary, or, if she's not sleeping with you, Gigi's one-time date, Connor also happens to find himself in a precarious situation with Anna. Connor never learns about Anna's relationship with Ben, and they never cross paths. Unlike with Ben, Anna just wants a casual flirty relationship with Connor. She'd flirt with him one moment, then ignore him again, completely refusing to sleep with him. Anna has a friend named Mary, who works in advertising sales for a local newspaper. Coincidentally, Mary's been helping Connor advertise his real estate business in the papers, but they've never met in person. Like Gigi, Mary keeps finding herself speaking to shallow men who never want anything serious. But the difference between them is that Mary mostly meets men online, all while struggling with the newer and more technology-based forms of dating. Eventually, Connor convinces Anna to sleep with him again, and Anna decides to do right after the fiasco in Ben's office, perhaps to seek comfort from the humiliating experience. After that, the two of them start spending more time together and Connor surprises Anna one day with a property he bought. He assures her that she doesn't have to decide right away, but he wonders if their relationship could head in that direction. Anna tells him that these are all things that she wants in life and appreciates, but she just doesn't like him that way. Connor smiles acceptingly, and they embrace each other in warm understanding. Though his thing with Anna isn't about to take off, things aren't all that bad since Connor would have a chance encounter at a restaurant. There, he meets Mary for the first time after having communicated with her solely via calls throughout their professional relationship. And now that they're face to face with each other, they find that they like each other a lot. Beth and Neil, or, if he's not marrying you, Janine and Gigi's co-worker Beth has been in a long-time relationship with Neil for seven years now, but he's yet to ask her the big question. Whenever they discuss it, Neil always replies that it's not that he isn't committed to their relationship, he just doesn't believe in marriage. For the most part, Beth and Neil have a mutual understanding of the issue, and Beth lets it go. But when Gigi came to the office with her revelations about guys and signals and commitment issues, Beth got messed up on these ideas. This prompted her to confront Neil, but he remained stubborn about his views on marriage, which led Beth to breaking up with him. Some days later, Beth attends her younger sister's wedding, where she's subjected to a series of embarrassments. Everyone knows about her issue with Neil, and this becomes the topic of many subtle and not-so-subtle conversations. To make matters a lot worse, there's this new age creep who's sitting with her on the table trying to woo her with his outlandish and borderline crazy ideas. During the wedding reception, Beth's father, Ken, tragically suffers from a heart attack. He's quickly taken to a hospital, and fortunately, he survives. Because of Ken's recent heart attack, the entire family ends up spending several days at his home to take care of him. 
The chief caregiver here is Beth and her sisters, while their husbands lounge around, quite uselessly around the house. Suddenly, while Beth's facing a particularly challenging day, Neil shows up having already finished doing most of the dishes. Tired and sad, Beth melts into Neil's arms, and she's relieved to have such a reliable man there by her side. After some time alone, both Beth and Neil have had time to think. Beth realizes that Neil's been more of a husband to her than any of her sister's uncaring husbands are to them. She makes peace with the fact that he doesn't want to get married and settles for a few sweet and very domestic promises, like Neil letting her eat snacks in bed and him abandoning his ugly cargo pants. But during the very first day he moves back in with Beth, Neil's already broken one of the promises that he made. He still has his cargo pants with him, so Beth confiscates it to throw it away. But Neil requests that she check the pockets and see if there's anything left inside them. Much to Beth's surprise, she finds an engagement ring within the pocket, and when she turns around, Neil is finally proposing to her. He tells her that he loves her so much that he's willing to forego his qualms about marriage just to make her happy. Epilogue In the end, Gigi and Alex are happily living together in an apartment while Janine moves into an apartment by herself with the hope of moving on from her broken marriage. On the other hand, Ben buys beer alone after successfully pushing both of the women in his life right out of it. Speaking of which, Anna's enjoying some progress in her singing career as she sings inside a restaurant. Connor and Mary are now a couple, so Mary deletes most of her dating accounts since she knows she doesn't need them anymore. And finally, Beth and Neil are finally having their long-awaited wedding in his boat.